And here we are live, Facebook. What's up? I'm with my man. Yo, what's up, dude? What's up, man? I, I love that. Uh, I love that picture you found. That was hilarious. That cracked me up. Yeah. Like, so, what's the backstory there, man? Uh, you know, I think that was like 12 years ago or something like that. Um, <laughs> it was just. I think you probably got off the internet because I've seen that one floating around there. So. Well, I'm a little jealous, man, because you, if 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 that was 12 years ago, man, you've aged pretty well, my friend. Bro, I'm a spring chicken still. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me, man. It's been uh, it's really been a whirlwind for uh, me and my team. We we've, we've been with EXP, I think, officially now for three months. Yeah, it's just been insane. Um, it's been a fun ride, so I'm I'm, I'm happy to unpack it and just kind of go through uh, go through the details of you know what we've experienced so far. Heck yeah, man! I'm excited to to dive into that, man. So let's um, tell me a little bit about like um your background, like. How long have you been doing real estate now? Sure. So I, I got in the business um, in 2004, 2005. I think I was 24 at the time. Um, you know, my first my first brokerage, I was at a, a bro brokerage called Exit Realty. Yeah. Um, you know, as you know, um, nobody really teaches you anything about the business. So, you know, I, I really didn't experience too much of that boom because I was so young and I was a new agent. So then I want to say it was 2000, I want to say the end of 2007, then I went to um, an online brokerage um, that did a lot of lead gen, you know, because I didn't know how to do that yet. So right. I went to, to another uh, um, independent company called Asset Realty Group. And so that's kind of how I first um, learned about lead gen and everything like that. And then I stayed with them until I want to say about 2012. And then that's when I... Uh, learned how to do Legion on my own online Legion and all that. And I went with an independent brokerage called Abbey Realty. That's a local independent brokerage here in my market. R great guys, really great group of people. Um, and then in 2014, while I was there, um, I was awarded the HUD contract for my area. We're in Olympia, which is an hour South of Seattle. We're in the, uh, we're the capital of Washington state. Okay. So, um, so, there was still a lot of REO in our market at that time. Um, so we had that going. I had my lead gen going and everything. And, you know, we were doing a ton, ton of volume with me. I had a co-listing agent. We had an assistant, um, you know, and then that kind of dried up. But my lead gen was still going really strong. And so then in 2017, I was just trying to figure out how to capitalize more on it um, because I was creating a ton of opportunities but I didn't have anybody to really service those opportunities besides myself. Yeah. You'd refer them to an agent in the office or something like that, but <laughs> they're not going to really follow up. Right. Like uh, they're not vested. They're not on your right. team. Then, then we went to uh, Keller Williams in April of 2017. Um, that's when I actually started, started my team. Me and my assistant went over there and we, we, we formed a team and um, we, we started with one agent and, um, and then I kept it really small. I only had like three. We we did become the number one team over at Keller Williams um, before before we left. We were the number one team over there. And then um, also 2012. That's when I really first started investing in coaching. So um, you know, I knew there's a better way to learn learn this business. And so that's also when I went to my first um, exponential growth summit and. Uh, Jim yeah. Kendler and Michael Reese, those guys put that on. And so that's when I first invested in coaching there. Um, and so I really took a lot of how my team's built and everything from the coaching that I've learned from those guys. And and uh, my personal coach there um, was Cliff Freeman. Yeah, I know Cliff. And Cliff, is, uh, Cliff is the one that introduced me to ESP. So I want to say it was probably October of 2017. Okay. He, he introduced – me to exp and i watched it and everything and i was like dude this is insane like i mean just the just the opportunity the that you have with this company i mean it's like nothing that i've ever seen before um and so you know i did a lot of research in the company i actually went to the shareholders meeting um in 2017 in vegas before i even joined the company yeah um and and so we basically made a decision i went on a three-week um three-week vacation to Europe um, just last summer with my family. And basically 
my agents and then also our assistant Karen who's sitting right next to me now. <laughs> they pretty much when I got back, they're like, Hey man, like we've looked over everything, you know, we they want to all take part of that opportunity. Yeah. You know, so, so it's really a team consensus and you know, that's really the, the coolest thing that I think about this model is because, you know, if you're if you're a team leader, you know, you're responsible for other people than yourself. Yeah. And, uh, what what value that you actually bring to the table and not just now, but, you know, how, how can you help their family uh, sustain through good and bad times? And with this opportunity, I mean, it's just been phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah. No doubt about yeah. it. Man. So. There's a lot to unpack there. I want to I want to back up just a, a little bit before we get into your transition because there was some, at some point in your business, um, you know, if you got in in 2004 and 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 then you were you know the, that up till you were the number one team at Keller Williams in 2017 when you left. Yeah. Where was it in that? Um, in that time between that you really started to get it in real estate, man. Like when when did it really start to? to uh, I would say that was probably, let's say 2014, you know, that's probably when we really started getting a lot of traction, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of an avid learner and things like that. And so, you know, we had a lot of volume in the HUD business, but I knew that was going away one day. Yeah. So, you know, our, our model of what we're built on is um, a lot of lead gen. Uh, we do a lot of prospecting ourselves, um, expired for sale by owners, circle prospecting, you know, all the online lead gen, Google, Facebook, all that. And yeah. then also additional leverage. So we also have ISAs. So really once I started reinvesting my money, you know, basically in 2014, 2015, um, 2016, and started, um, you know, finding good ISAs because that's the painful part. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you got to go through some bad ones and spend that money to really find good ones, you know, and they're like gold, I mean, for your business. If you right. really find them. And so that's what that's what uh, happened. We found some really good ones, and I was able to really scale scale from there, man. So that's awesome. So I mean, you guys will do over well over a hundred transactions this year, and you know, obviously, you guys are you guys are cranking at a really good pace right now. Um, how is your team structured right now? Like, you, I know you mentioned you had some ISAs. What what is what what roles do you have on your team now? Yeah. So so basically, I, I run the team. I'm still in production myself, so I'm still out there. You know, mostly I do listings, you know. Um, sure. And so we have um, we have two two admins, basically, the quarterback or operation. So Karen, um, she basically does all the transaction management. She also writes offers for our team members because my, my thing is really keeping like our team members face to face, you know, with, with buyers or sellers, because that's where we make the business. Right. You know? um, so she runs that. Um, we just brought on a second admin, Charlie. Uh, he came from another another team over at Keller Williams just recently in the last few weeks. And he's really uh, refining our systems. You know, we use Market Maker. We use Boomtown. Yeah. And, uh, you know, systems and accountability as, as we grow because we've, we've gone from where it was just three agents on my team to now we transition to EXP and there's 10. Wow. On my team, you know, and that's just the team because we also, when we transitioned over here, we started an actual um, Olympia branch of EXP in my market. Okay. So we have our own branch of EXP here. And just in that local branch at EXP, uh, in three months, we have, I think, 22 agents um, at our at our Olympia branch. That's awesome, man. For EXP. So, um, so then we have, yeah, 10 agents. Um, the more seasoned agents, myself, and there's uh, there's three other agents. We do listing appointments, and the rest of them mostly focus on the buy side. Okay, where is uh, most of your business coming from right now? I mean, you mentioned that you know you you've got those ISAs in place. Are you guys are you guys a pro? I mean, with the exception of the HUD business, right? Are, are you guys mostly a prospecting based company? Yeah, HUD's <laughs> HUD's HUD's probably like one percent of my business. Okay, um, and you knew now, that would happen, by the way, right? You you said that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I knew that was going to happen. So, you know, I mean, I'm just like, well, what's the next progression? And so, so basically, um, we we have um, two different ISA teams on our platform. So on Boomtown, we have one ISA team that's on that platform. And then Market Maker, we have another one. And then we have one ISA that's full time with us. And he does nothing but uh, set listing appointments. Okay. So we, we have basically three different ISAs. Um, 
the the one that's the seller, he does circle prospecting for sale by owners, expired FISBOs, home values. So um, we have a lot of um, we have a lot of good luck with circle prospecting. So okay. um, our our thing and and it was from uh, Michael Reese's book, Inside Sales Predict Predictability, where basically those guys they built their whole ISA um, their whole ISA team off of off of uh, that book. And so that book really has a lot to do with KPIs and knowing how many calls an ISA should make. Yeah. You know, if they're good ISA or bad, that's going to actually convert to an actual appointment or what we call a nurture, which is somebody that's going to sell within the next six to 12 months that's not committed to an agent. Right. So we, we really focus on building a big pipeline and then nurturing that pipeline. Um, okay. So that's, that's kind of what what we found works for us. So your ISAs, your ISAs are strictly seller lead gen, right? And so they're calling yeah, buyer lead gen too. So we have one one uh, that's for seller lead gen, and we have two different ISA teams on buyer lead gen. Got it. Okay. All right. That makes sense. And then how do your aid like what what are your agents roles um, with with the buyer leads when they come in on Boomtown or Market Maker? Yeah. So so um, basically, what we're doing is we're only passing the agents actual um, leads that are actually qualified. So meaning that the ISA spoke to them and there's timing and motivation and they're going to buy or sell within the next one to three months. Sometimes on the listing it might be a little further out on the listing side, but that's, that's how we actually pass then the appointments over to the agents. Okay. All right. What's our, what's, what's, what's a piece of technology that's working really well for you guys right now? Dude, I mean, it's all the stuff that everybody uses. I mean, we, we use Cole Realty Resources for a circle prospecting, and we use the Mojo dialer. You can use up to three lines. We have triple line dialer that we can use. And just that, um, I know every area is different, but we just have good luck just calling around or just listed, just sold, um, just pending, all that. So that, that for us, I mean, we have contests in our office too because we still prospect too. Yeah. Um, last month we had a dial contest where, you know, who can make the most dials um, this month it's contact. So, I mean, we're also doing this. We're not just relying on, you know, the ISA because I, I think it's very important that agents learn the skills. Love it. I um, love know, it. Handling objections, role playing, all that. So those are things that we do we do daily. So. Okay. That's awesome, man. Yeah. We are, we are by and large a prospecting based company as well. So I, I can totally get in alignment with that, man. So, you know, that's, that's what's so cool is you guys, you're not passively waiting for business. You're going out and attacking the market, right? You're making your own market. And that's why, you know, you were, when you, when you, when you DM me back on Facebook and you were like, you sent me your numbers and you were like, you know, 110 deals, 40 something million. You were like, but we'll double that next year. And I, yeah. and I, you know, the minute you said that, I had no doubt about it, man, because yeah. like you guys are, you know, you're, you're going after your own business. And, and that's what I love about, you know, what you guys are doing. And, and I think you're going to be very successful. And, and, and so, you know, as you continue to grow and you continue to grow that database and all of those nurtures, um, you know, you're going to be able to continue to add people onto your team because you're going to be able to provide more value and you're just going to grow exponentially. So, so let's, let's talk a little bit now about, um, so you were at Keller Williams when you heard about uh, EXP and you heard about it from Cliff uh, and it was in the month of October. Oh. And, and then you told me you moved, um, how long did the move take? So, so talk me through when you heard about it in October to when you went to the shareholders meeting to when you moved. So that was in, that was in October of uh, what was that? 2017. Right. So shareholders meeting, I think, when I went to that, that was March, March in 2017, when that was in Vegas, um, to, to actually moving over, that was in August. That was August, August 28th is when we actually uh, moved, moved over. And it would have been sooner, but I still hold that HUD contract, so I had to get some logistics, you know, with that. But basically everybody, you know, I went to all, all my team members and I wanted to get their opinion too. It's not, yeah. you know, it's just my opinion that uh, I value. So, um, so it took us a little longer and I, I really wish um, we would have probably moved sooner just because there, there's opportunities that we obviously lost out on, on, on uh, stock and things like that. But I mean, it's still early in the game, man. Oh dude, it's so early. 15,000 agents, man, we've got, we, we got a, we got a bunch of ground to gain. So we're, we're in good shape, man. So talk me through, you know, you, you mentioned before that, 
you know, if it's just one agent that's moving over, it's really easy, right? You, yeah. the, the decision just includes, um, you know, that agent and, and potentially their family, right? So when you have a team though, you know, you're, depending on how many people are on your team, you're, you're not only dealing with each one of those team members, but you're also dealing with their family. So that decision is a big decision. So yeah. Pat, so I'm, I'm assuming you heard about it from Cliff in October, and then you probably started doing your due diligence, and then and then at some point you found out enough to to then go to your team, and and so how did you do that? Did you approach each one of them one by one? Did you gather them in a group? How did that? What did well, that look like? The the funny the funny thing is, I think actually my current assistant Karen, I think she actually because she wasn't she wasn't with me at that time. I transitioned the assistants right when I heard heard about it because it was at the year's end and my old assistant had some family um, family things that she had to take care of. And so I think I told Karen about it first and she was like, oh, this sounds real, <laughs> real interesting. And she didn't really know all the details. I just kind of gave her just just a rough summary. And then I just basically sat down with with each agent and um, explained to them the opportunity. And, you know, everybody was really excited and everybody's really happy still to this day just because it's a little different when you wake up in the morning and you actually know you're actually creating something mm -hmm. than just doing the same thing that you've always, always done. And there's actually, you know, there's actually light at the end of the tunnel, you know, I mean, a lot of agents in this business, you know, they do a lot of production and things, but there's very few, um, you know, that actually reinvest that money, you know? And so this yeah. is really the only model that I've really come across. And I mean, I'm, I'm 37 years old. I'm still going to be in this business uh, for a long time, but not all the agents on my team probably want to be in the business um, that long because some are older than that. That really gives them an exit strategy out of this this business, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, I I just don't I just probably don't think too many people when they get in this business they're like, oh, I want to make a lot of money, but as soon as you stop producing, that money stops. Right. Transaction so, treadmill. Right. We've heard it. Yeah, it's the transaction treadmill, and it's been a great business. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed. Uh, we've, we've worked very hard, but um, but you know what? What's really cool now is we're actually seeing a byproduct um, of all these other things happen from doing the same thing that we've been doing. So we're not really doing anything different. And so, you know, it's it's really been interesting just to kind of see this unfold because we knew there was this potential for this actually happening, but we didn't know it would unfold the way it's unfolding for us. Yeah. And, and, and so w when I'm curious, when you moved to Keller Williams, was any part of the reason why you moved um, profit share or did that not really play in your decision? No, no, not, not really. It was more for me. Um, I, I just had more opportunities than I could personally service. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm probably missing out on a lot of revenue. And so then you do the math and you're like, holy crap, you know, um, out of all those opportunities you generate. And so it was really more for me to go over there to build a, build a team. But then once you build a team, you know that you have new problems, right? Yeah. You know, you train your agents and, you know, your, your agents, once they're trained and they're seasoned, they're like, well, you know, this is good and great, but, you know, I want, I want more money. Right. And so right. then there's the, then there's the attrition. And so I feel like this model, uh, it solves a lot of things because um, I'm, everybody's in alignment in this company, meaning um, the agents, they have more upside, they have more value if they're on your team. And if they're ready to, you know, do their own thing, you, you can also assist and help them in that as well. Yeah. When Cliff approached you in October um, with EXP and, and you know, you you kind of decided in your head that you were going to make the move. Was there anything that you were anything that you that you, that you thought might present a challenge about the move? Um, you know, not not really. I mean, I, we there was nothing really in my head because I've moved brokerages before. Sure. I, I just knew logistically it would be a little bit hectic just because we do do a considerable amount of business, you know, for letting your clients know, you know, and then also if you have any listings at your old brokerage, you know, transferring that, you know, closing out any escrows that you might have those type of things. But, um, you know, I have a whole team really, um, really helped in that part, you know? Yeah. So, um, it's been, it's been great, man. <laughs> so you talked about, um, now opening up like, your own EXP branch office. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Tell me, tell me, 
I mean, that has to be, and, and by the way, I, I, we've done the same thing, but I want to hear it from you, what that's meant to you and your team. Yeah. So, so, um, so we have our own branch office, which is technically the Regis suites in, in our, in our city in Olympia. Um, and so we opened that up and, um, you know, it was just kind of very interesting because after we transitioned over, we just had people start reaching out to us, meeting other agents, you know, reaching out to us and wanting to know more. I mean, to be honest with you, we really haven't had a ton of time where we're passive or where we're aggressively even, you know, calling agents uh, right. in, in that manner. So it just all really happened very organically. Um, you know, it's not, <laughs> we're doing, we're, we're still doing so much business that we, we just don't have a ton of time where we're just like, aggressively going after that side. It's just more from people that have done business with us, people that we've worked with in the past, you know, those type of things on um, how we're really sharing EXP with, with other agents. Right. So um, what is that like? So you, so most of the conversations that you're having about EXP in your local marketplace, at least are just based on, um, uh, interactions you're having uh, with either, you know, uh, you know, through transactions or either through agents that are actually just, they're reaching out to you wanting to know more. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's gotta be cool, man. I mean, you've got people actually calling you to say, Hey, tell me more about EXP. And I'm sure you're excited to share your story. Yeah. 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 Just before, um, <laughs> just before we got on, yeah, we just had another, another agent come in our office and you know, they sat down and wanted to know more. And usually the, the thing is like, just because EXP is still so small, I mean, people just don't know really what it is, you know, yeah. and that's, that's kind of what we find out. So we just kind of go through it really thoroughly so they can see, you know, what the opportunity is there for them and if it fits their business law, uh, model and if it fits their family's life, you know? Yeah. So you mentioned um, too, Joe, that, you know, you, and I'm so glad you said it because like I we, we often think the same thing is that, you know, we're doing the exact same thing we were because we came from Keller Williams, too. We're, okay. we're doing the exact same thing we were doing over at Keller Williams. Um, we just feel like we're doing it under a better business model, a more sustainable business model. Um, and that, you know, we've added in those uh, two additional layers for passive income, right, through through company stock and, and then through revenue share. And um I, I think what we're most excited about is uh, we're excited that we don't we're not necessarily having to beat down people's doors and really we're not interested in doing that anyway. We're not we're, we're, we're that's I don't like the term recruiting. You know what I mean? I love to share EXP story, especially through out, outlets like this. Yeah, I think. I think the biggest misconception is when I talk to people is that, you know, that they're going to have that when they join, they're going to have to start recruiting for the company <laughs> yeah. further from the truth, you know? Yeah, no, I, I would agree with you there. I mean, um, so, so like the agents that are on my team or even agents that aren't on my team, like it's really a relationship thing. It's like, you know, people are going to reach out to people they feel comfortable with. Um, you know, and that's kind of how, how this grows. I mean, I'm sure everybody does it different, but I mean, you know, we, we probably do business in a similar way. Yeah. We're not really, we're not really trying to beat down people's doors. Um, we're just conducting the business that we conduct and we're continuing to build our business. And through that, we grow more relationships. So, yeah, that's awesome, man. So, so tell me this, man, what, you know, obviously the dust is probably starting to settle a little bit on your transition at this point. And, yep. and so you guys are focused on 2019, you're getting ready and you, and you yep. guys are grinding it out on the phones. Yep. So, so real quickly, like, tell me what 2019 will look like for you and your team. So, so for our team, you know, from, from what we, what we mapped out on everybody's personal goals on the team, I mean, um, volume wise, we should, we should be able to hit 60 million next year. And, Transaction wise, it's probably 250 sides for, for us in the market. So, um, you know, it's just kind of, it's just kind of taken on a life of its own, to be honest with you. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's great. Um, I, I really look at the opportunity in 2019. It's going to be really more for agents that have more skills, agents that are more seasoned, um, just because the market's shifting in every market. I mean, we yeah. all know that. And so, you know, the newer agents, it's going to be a little tougher for just because you can't overprice listing 10 or 20,000. It's not going to sell, 
you know, so uh, we're, we're, we're just looking at, there's going to probably be a lot more opportunity for us in 2019 just because of what the market's doing. So, yeah, I love it. I love it, man. And, and I, I'm always curious. I love asking this question because, you know, there are still a lot of traditional brokerages in our market, like um, Cobalt Banker or Berkshire Hathaway. What do you think, what, do you, what is your personal opinion on the long-term impact of uh, models like EXP, like cloud brokerages on traditional brokerages? You know, I, I, I feel like, you know, we've all been through the market cycles and I feel like if, if we go through another down cycle, it's going to be tough because, you know, each one of those agents, they're going to start looking at their check. They're going to start looking at their split, desk fee, whatever it is. And they're going to really start thinking about their money. Yep. When, times are, when times are good, most agents, you know, it's, it's coming in, you know, it's coming from wherever and they're not thinking about that. But when times get tough, that's when a lot of people, a lot of agents start re evaluating their, their, their office that they're with. So I just feel like with the XP, you know, really because it's cloud based, you know, it's going to be more sustainable for sure. I mean, um, we don't have to pay the brick and mortar that a lot of these other franchises do. And so, you know, that's just a lot of overhead that's, that's saved um, in money. So, I mean, I think, I think the interesting thing is I think you're going to just see more producers come to EXP once they actually know about the model and they know how they can basically have three buckets of income, you know, three pillars of income, uh, just because it doesn't really make any sense. Even if you're at a hundred percent shop, still doesn't make sense, man. I, I capped in three months. I do my 20 more transactions and go to EXP con and the shareholders meeting, you know, we can all qualify for, for icon, the icon award. I mean, it doesn't get much simpler than that. I mean, but I'm looking 10 years down the road. I yeah. mean, that's, that's what I'm looking at. I'm like, well, you know, 10 years is going to go by fast. And I think what you're going to really see is you're going to see a defining gap between the comp the agents that are with this company and then the agents that are just with a traditional company. That's what I really think. Yeah, no, I agree, man. It, the funny thing is, is like we um, we sat down with an agent, a younger agent. Um, this was on Tuesday, I think. Mm -hmm. And here's where I really think the big impact is going to be uh, when the average age, I think, across the United States is like 57. Mm -hmm. And and I think that I think when when you start to see millennials start to um, transition, more millennials start to transition into our industry. Mm -hmm. that, that's when you're going to see a really big impact because they won't, they don't really see the value of the brick and mortar like older agents do. Right. And, and, yeah. and they, they, they have grown up working on these, you know, their whole life. Yep. <laughs> and so th that's when it's really going to get dangerous for, I think these traditional brick and mortar brokerages is that when the new millennials come in, how, what is going to be their value proposition then? Right. Because, you know, the great thing about what we're doing is we can collaborate literally at the highest level, right? We have classes being taught by some of the, not the top agents in our market, but the top agents in the freaking United States, right? And yeah. so for brick and mortar to compete with that, they'd literally have to fly somebody in, right? At, on their own expense to have them teach a class. And I, I just don't see how that's, I don't see how that's sustainable. No, and, and also the, the, the crazy part about it was really when we were at our old office, <laughs> I mean, it, it's, a, it's a really fancy, nice place, but, but on a daily basis, there was only, you know, the, the teams that were there. The rest of the, the, rest of the space really wasn't, wasn't filled up, and so it's like it's already shifted. It's just people don't know it yet. Yeah. I mean, most agents, even at a franchise, they, they work from home, you know? Yeah. I mean, and also it's like, how many clients do you actually meet at the office? I mean, we meet maybe 5% at the office. I mean, so it's like, I think it takes a while for people to actual, actually catch up. I think you have the early adopters and then, you know, the masses come later. I mean, that's yeah, just for sure. how things work, right? Absolutely, man. So I'm curious, man. So using, using our show as kind of like a platform um, to talk to agents and brokers out there, like what, what do you have to say with your, with the experience you've gained now about EXP to, to that, that potential agent or that broker who, who may be doing some research or, uh, or even looking to make a change? Yeah. I, I would say for first thing is like, 
how long do you plan on being in this business? If you're if you're an agent that plans on being in this business for 10 or 20 years, you know, what's your exit strategy? I mean, we have plenty of agents that say, you know, oh, well, I'm going to buy rental properties. Well, you know, a rental property in our market, if you get one for cheap, you know, that's 200,000, 20 percent of that 60,000 invested, you know. So you have to really be very, very, very you know, strict if you're going to do those type of things. And, and the truth is we know most agents aren't. So I, I really just feel like this model, I mean, it's really easier for you to actually build wealth while you're still doing what you're doing now. Um, but I think every agent has 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 to look at that and, and really make that decision for themselves. But so far, you know, all the agents on our team, I mean, they couldn't be happier. I mean, because they're actually having things happen as a byproduct of what they're already doing. You know, I'm not asking them to go out there and do anything different than when we were at Keller Williams. Um, so it's just more more value for for the agents. I mean, that's just the it's a phenomenal thing, man. I mean, we just wake up every day and we're like, holy crap, it's been three months. This is going to be insane in a year. Like, uh, like how fast we're growing in in all aspects. So I mean, we're just we're just really excited, man. We're just really thankful and for the opportunity that was presented to us. Absolutely, brother. Listen, man, I, I so appreciate you taking some time out and sharing your story. Hey, man, how can people, if if, if people want to know how to grow, you know, a, a business where they're selling over 100 homes a year, uh, you know, through lead generation, or if they want to learn more about EXP because uh, they identify with your unique story, how can people get a hold of you, Joe? Sure. Um, you know, Facebook Messenger is fine, or, or they can... Uh, they can email me. My email is joe at nwhomexperts.com. So either one of those two ways, I mean, people people can reach out. I mean, obviously we all advertise. So if they want to call me, my number's online. They can find that anywhere. But I mean, yeah, no, I'm excited, Mike. I'm, I'm excited to, to meet you in person. I'm sure I'll see you at the shareholders meeting. No doubt. It's just really cool just being able to connect with them. Um, with other other hitters at the company, man, because there's so many of them. It's so crazy every day. You see, you know, some new mega agent or mega team come over. It's insane. Yeah. It's an all. It's and we're just getting started, my friend. And we're just getting started. Yeah, I'm super excited, brother. Listen, I'm so happy you uh, you were able to dial in and hang out for a minute and share your story. If you ever need anything, uh, I'll always be here as a resource for you. And, and, yeah, and thanks absolutely. again, man. Absolutely, man. No, I appreciate it. So yeah, we'll we'll do another one, maybe six months or a year, man. We'll give you the update, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty good. All right, my man. Thanks so much. Thanks, Mike. All right, Joe.